So we're gonna have a little bit more hot tea and talk a little bit about uh, Roaming Millennial. This is a world This is a world premiere. This is a world Hey, how's it going? We're having a little bit more tea. Today I am having this, um, it's Numi Organic, and this is turmeric. Amber Sun, and it's delicious, y'all. Um, first of all, I wanna show you, it's really, I mean, in case you were wondering how much turmeric was in there, it's really in there, it's actually dying the bag. This has actually been in there for a little while. And um, so, uh, and I actually like my tea a little sweet, so I put a little bit of agave in there. So it's got a little agave and it's, it's really tasty. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, uh, I think it was last year, maybe maybe the year before, I don't know, there was a turmeric challenge, remember, when everybody was doing the turmeric, or the, it was the turmeric, or ginger, or something, there was something that people were doing, ginger shots and turmeric shots, and I did both of them, and I love turmeric, turmeric, um, and so I, you know, it was nothing for me, but you know, maybe I'll link to it or something like that. So that's the tea that I'm having today. And I wanna to talk to you all about a couple of things. First thing, my show is uh, exactly one week, uh, one week away from its opening and we finally got some, some posters. First of all, I wanna show you some of the graphics. So I don't know if you can see, but faintly in the background, there's some minstrel performers going on there, but this is the one that's, scaring me yeah this one is scaring me a little bit because this is actually going to be going up in stores all around the community of red hook where i used to live uh before i moved to detroit and then there's this version which is just the american flag and so as people walk through the neighborhood they'll see all of these different posters and some stores may even put all of the posters up but yeah that show it's going to be opening uh next week we have a preview on the 10th wednesday may 10th and then the show opens on thursday may 11th and runs just for one weekend i know it's very very sad that uh you know if i had a fancy theater somewhere uh, if we didn't have to actually rent out other buildings we might be able to run these things longer but you know that's just the way it is hope we get that and hope we get that any a hope we get I can't even say it. Y'all, I can't even say it. I hope we get that NEA grant. Um, so, some things I want to talk about. So, that's the show. If you all include some information, you can always go to the website, which is redhooktheater.org, and learn about my theater company. And you can also learn about the show and even get tickets if you're around. Um, I also want to shout out the Flem Face. Um, I just want to say thank you to the the Flem Face for a shout out in your video. Uh, Flem Fl the the Flem Face does shout outs of some of their favorite or some you know YouTubers, and I guess they're vegan YouTubers, and some of them aren't vegan YouTubers, but what have you. Um, so there's a, a fun little video video, and I got a little bit of a, a shout out, and so did Mod Vegan, and there was another vegan who I can't remember, I think it's called The Something Wife, The Something Wife, but um, I, I watched a few of those videos and so that was cool. Anyway, so all of that said, thank you, The Flem Face, for that shout out. Um, also, those yesterday um, expressed, you know, they people were talking about my update on Trump having that conversation with President Putin, Russian President Vladimir Putin, and, you know, saying that, you know, I mentioned that there are some who are saying that this, you know, where relations between the U.S. and Russia are very, very bad and that it could mean that we're, you know, close to some kind of nuclear disaster. I honestly think that we're in a lot more trouble because of the climate, because of climate change, but uh, that it was something that, you know, that is something that's being said. And they were, um, people uh, were a little bit critical of that, and I don't blame them because, it does seem that our governments are constantly using fear to manipulate us to behave in a certain way. Um, and so I don't want this channel to be about that. I don't want you guys to think that you're coming to this channel to be, you know, to get scared about things. But I do uh, try to 
make you aware of things as I become aware of them and things that concern me. I want to be honest and say that, yeah, it concerns me, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I think you all should be um, afraid. Um, I like to say, pay attention. Just be paying attention. Just be learning about these things so that you can understand them and be able to talk to people about them. Um, yeah, so, so that's something. I also... Um, wanted to, uh, yeah, it was a uh, blog like No One's Watching who also just pointed out that for the past 60 years we've been talking about Cold War, we've been talking about nuclear holocaust and all of these things, and really a lot of it is about controlling society, right? It's the way we control society. Um, yeah, so, yeah. I also want to give, um, I'm really uh, happy to let you all know that my favorite news outlet, Democracy Now!, was awarded by the Society for Professional Journalists. Um, that's very cool. And also, um, uh, one of their recent stories regards North Carolina House Bill 467. I don't know how many of you are aware of it, but it, limit, it limits damages against hog farms. So I thought maybe that would be something that vegans might want to be aware of. It's interesting because it's not been framed in terms of animal rights, although I think it could be, and I don't know if the struggle continues, but um, there might be a way for vegans to kind of maybe start, if you're, if you're a vegan and you're in North Carolina and you know about House Bill 467 or you don't know about House Bill 467, it might be something that you can learn about. Right now, it's being framed around, you know, human rights and civil rights because apparently um, billions of gallons of waste are collected from these farms every year and it's disposed of by spraying it into the air they spray it as a fine mist and let the air carry it into neighboring communities that happen to be primarily communities of color who are being affected, but it's making it um, difficult for people to even be outside of their homes and certainly having negative health effects on members of the community. And again, this bill limits the damages to these hog farms. And as I was listening to the story, I was thinking to myself, I wonder how many of these people who are being adversely affected by this, you know, method that they're using to dispose of waste are supporting that industry. I wonder if there are people who are supporting that industry and eating, you know, bacon and other, you know, animal products. And I imagine that there are some, as in, you know, you know, all communities. And I wonder if there would be a way for vegans to, you know, help them to be more intersectional in their analysis of what's happening in that community and not simply think about the fact that there is some structural racism in place in the fact that they are able to do this because African Americans don't have very much political clout in the United States. Um, and that's simply a fact, but um, for someone to maybe get those folks to stop eating animals, certainly to stop eating um, the products that are made by, um, you know, that come from the animals that are being exploited by those hog farms. So, I don't know, I would like to know what you all think about that. Um, and it seems to me that there are, you know, there's certainly the question of people who work in those industries, but when you're just living in a community and it's not necessarily affecting, you know, your wallet to, you're not going to lose your job, but maybe that is, I don't know. So I would like, I would like someone who's in that area to let me know if you're aware of work that's doing, being done around animal rights, uh, especially in terms of the hog farms in North Carolina that are doing, you know, the worst polluters. Yeah. So that's that. Two of my favorite YouTube vegan content creators or vegan YouTube content creators are content creators who happen to be vegan. Mad Blender and a vegan called Quest have both made videos about roaming millennial. Roaming millennial. Uh, vegan called Quest made a video responding to Roman roaming millennials video about 
you know, five re reasons why I don't like vegans, or it's called why I don't like vegans. And I'll include a link in the description box below. But it was very interesting because he, you know, basically points out the fact that Romy, Roaming Millennial talks about being, you know, pro-life. <laughs> and yet not being pro-life and being anti-vegan. And those things seem to be you know, there seems to be a contradiction there that um, Roaming Millennial isn't quite aware of. And I wonder how many others in the pro-life movement also might have it brought to their attention that they're claiming to be pro-life, yet they're part of the exploitation that's happening in the animal commodities industry by purchasing these products that are made from the exploitation of animals. So that's something that you know, was, I thought that was really interesting of a vegan call quest to call that out. And then Matt, Matt Blender uh, made a response video to Roaming Millennials video criticizing the Science March. And this is the heart of this video. This is going to be the heart of our discussion today. So sit back, kick back, <laughs> and let's talk about this. So first of all, Roaming Millennial was critical of the Science March because they felt, and I believe she identifies as she, um, and in part because she, she was very critical of, you know, being, uh, you know, anti-binary, non-binary in one's thinking about gender. So I'm going to just say roaming, roaming, millennial, roaming millennial she, was being critical of the Science March because she felt strongly that SJWs were taking over science. And so there are two things I want to talk about. One, I'm going to talk about science. I want to talk about, let's unpack the science thing just a little bit, just a little bit. And then we're going to unpack the SJW thing just a little bit, just a little bit. So science. There are those who claim to be pro-science. In fact, pro-science to a fault, pro-science to the point where nothing else matters. Feelings don't matter. Thoughts don't matter. Culture doesn't matter. Nothing matters except for science. And I think in some ways, you know, that's commendable. If you want, you know, I don't want, I don't want to think about it until it's been proved. The problem with that is that it assumes that science is somehow this absolute. And there may be some of you who are thinking, well, yes, science is pretty absolute. And, but the, the issue what that I'm having with that is that very often scientists don't agree. So how is it possible that science is absolute and yet you can have differing opinions amongst scientists? And I'm going to say, you know, let's use as a, you know, case in point, climate change. You have a majority of the scientific community that agrees that climate change is affected by human activities and, you know, they issue certain warnings about and tell us kind of where we are in terms of science, uh, climate change and that, you know, we got to watch out. We got to do something, right? Get on the ball. Let's do something about science, uh, about climate change. And yet you have this minority in the scientific community saying that, no, that's crap. No, that's crap. Interestingly, we seem to be responding as a society based on the science that tells us climate change is not real. In fact, we have a president of the United States who is a climate change denier. And so I think, okay, it's fair to be, let's say we're being rational and we're looking at the fact that it is possible that climate change is not a concern. So we're, you know, we're responding that way. And that's very rational because science tells us that, you know, that's not a problem. But science also tells us that it's a problem. And in fact, it seems to me that it would be more logical to err on the side of the majority. 
right? Because we're not talking about a majority that, you know, is just yelling, trying to yell down the dissenting voices. It's a majority of people who have used the scientific method to demonstrate over and over again that climate change is a real thing. It's a real problem. So, again, understanding that none of it is absolute, but why does it make more sense to follow the science that does the thing that we, you know, that makes life easier for us? And that's another point of this, right? So, if most of the scientists are claiming that there is a reality that is going to cause most of us to have to change our behavior, it's certainly more convenient to believe in the science that tells us, no, you're fine, don't change anything, right? And at that point, it's no longer about science. It's about our feelings. It's about what we want. It's about our desires. And so there is a deep hypocrisy in talking about science and the absoluteness, absolutism, the, 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 the fact that science is, you know, this thing that is not to be questioned when the reality is most of us just want to, we're going to follow the thing that allows us to do what we want. And so, for example, if we hear from scientists that there's more than two genders, if there's one scientist out there that says, no, that's not true, guess what? We can be listening to science. We can be following science to deny the existence of more than two genders. But does that have to, more to do with science or does it have more to do with our feelings? We don't want to believe that there are more than two genders. And so we're going to side with the folks, regardless of the fact that a majority may have recognized the existence of more than two genders long ago. What's interesting about that is regardless of science, there are people who are born with two sets of genitalia. There are people who are born with two sets of genitalia. It happens. Look it up. You don't have to believe me. In the case where someone is born with, you know, both, you know, what we would consider male parts and what we would consider female parts, would we consider them both genders or do they represent a at least a third gender. I don't know. But it certainly leaves an opening to question <laughs> whether there are simply two genders or whether there might be more going on with gender than, you know, we were taught in school or than is comfortable for us to believe. I don't know. And so once we accept the fact that there is, you know, this group of people who were born with both genders, and then of course, you know, you might say, well, then they have to choose. Well, nature made them with both sets of genitalia. And so in some ways it would be unnatural for them to then change their gender. <laughs> Right? They'd be, they'd be choosing, they'd be selecting a gender. And often, you know, in cases like that, the parents make the decision for them. Right? So that's one thing. But then, you know, the other thing that I was getting to is that if there's this, you know, possibility that one could be born with, you know, outwardly showing, outwardly facing genitalia from both those we consider male and those we consider female, is it not possible that there are people who have other differences to their chemistry, to their biology, that makes them internally not exactly as they may appear on the outside? I don't know. And I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to 
push on anyone the existence I happen to believe and based on observation, based on, on the reality that there have to be more than, it's, it has to be more complicated than just male, female. It has to be more complicated than that because nature has shown us through demonstrating by people who were born with, you know, both uh, two sets of, of genitalia, that it's possible that there is another option there. Nature has shown us this, so it has to be more complicated than just one or the other. And so with that in mind, what other, what other, you know, if there's a spectrum between one and the other, if we even have to think of it as, you know, one at one end and one at the other, um, what other variations could be happening internally? So the fact that science recognizes more than two gender isn't simply based on a feeling. It's based on something that nature has presented with, a puzzle that nature has presented us with and asked us to figure out if we're interested. You know, presented us with to figure out for ourselves, I think. And so again, those who are inclined to believe one thing versus the other, that ultimately boils down to how we feel about it, what we're comfortable with. At least I think so. I want to leave it at that. I want to leave it at that. And talk a little bit about this SJW thing. So in, in Roaming Millennials video, she seems to be defining SJWs or it, using as a clue to whether uh, to the existence of SJWs or the inter proof of the interference of SJWs that diversity, diversity, that they talked about diversity in terms of the science march. And Med Blender talks a lot about how, you know, it's been shown that diversity creates an environment where scientific advances can be made at a faster rate because you have people coming from more different perspectives thinking about the same thing, yes? But neither here nor there. Does, is diversity in and of itself a bad thing? According to Roaming Millennial, diversity is a bad thing. Another thing that Roaming, Roaming Millennial criticizes, cr criticizes is social justice. Social justice in and of itself as something negative and a sign that social justice warriors are taking over. And so now we're in a place where, according to, you know, roaming millennial, social justice is bad and diversity is bad. So now, is anyone who embraces diversity a social justice warrior? Is anyone who advocates for social justice a social justice warrior? I'm more and more confused because I've made several videos in the past month, in the past few weeks, actually, questioning what does it mean to be a social justice warrior and asking specifically those from the anti-social justice warrior community to speak on this. And I've gotten everything from social justice warriors or cancer, that's it, to people saying, well, no, social justice warriors are people who take things to the extreme. Roaming Millennial is not talking about people think, taking things to the, the extreme. Roaming Millennial is talking about diversity being a bad thing and social justice being a bad thing and an indication that the science march must have been bullshit. So now I'm asking again, please will someone, someone define what it means to be a social justice warrior? Because my suspicion is that to be anti-social justice, in truth, is to simply be conservative. Because social justice is simply about transforming society so that things can be more just. So that there is more access to people who have been shut out historically. Now, if no one has been shut out historically, no one has anything to worry about, right? Because we don't make things up, right? We don't have to make things up. We just look at what's there. It's an investigation into our reality and saying, hey, is this okay? If this is okay, we leave it alone. If it's broken and there are signs that may indicate that certain systems within our, in our 
American society, at least the United States of America, are broken, right? So we look at those things and we think about ways to make them better. But if the idea, the very idea of social justice is flawed in the minds of certain individuals, I would like to know what they see as those flaws. I don't know. I really want to know what you think. So I'm going to enjoy this tea. I'm going to get on my, with my day, y'all. Um, so that's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself the way